unto you, believe that what he did on the cross, he did it for you, and then you're accepting him as your Savior. You're trusting him to save you. Salvation is not a commitment to serve. Salvation is a decision to trust. I decided I'm going to trust him to take me to heaven. It wasn't a decision. I got to serve the Lord. Because then if I don't serve the Lord, then I doubt my salvation. So there's a lot of people that realize I'm not serving God like I promised. Or they committed as we have done here. I went forward. I was baptized. Baptism has nothing to... Because I've asked people, where are you going to go now? Well, I've been baptized. That's not what I ask. Baptism has nothing to do with you saving you. That's not why you're saved. So you have a reason to question and doubt your salvation. I went forward in the church. Going forward in the church. Where do you find the Bible verse that says, if I go forward in the church, I'll go to heaven? That won't work. But it leads to questions and doubts. And a lot of people have that. I promise to turn from my sin. Because a preacher will stand up and say, you have to turn from your sins. Are you willing to be made willing? On the pound of pulpit, no, weak point here, pound pulpit. So, is that what you've got to do? If you had to turn from your sins, okay, which ones? Just the big ones. Well, what about the little ones? That means you have to turn from all your sins. Try it. How you doing? He said, I turned from all of my sins. Let me talk to your wife. Let me talk to your kids. You've got problems. But you'll find out as time goes Okay, I find out I haven't turned from all my sins. I still have wrong thoughts. I still do wrong things. I still get angry. And I still get bitter. And so I got every reason to doubt my salvation because, see, I didn't turn from all of my sins. Well, you've got to make Christ the Lord and the master of your life. That means you're promising to serve him. So repent of sin means stop being bad. And committing your life to Christ means I promise to be good. So many people think they've got to go to heaven because I've got to stop being bad. And I've got to start being good. Make him the Lord and master of my life. That means service. So if you don't serve, you have every reason to question doubt your salvation. So you don't have security. Because you see, you're trusting the wrong thing. And that will not save. Look at number two. Why did you get saved? Why did you get saved? Okay, here I am. I'm saved. And a lot of people are going around and they're preaching all over the place. And their main thing is, don't you want to have fellowship with God? Don't you want to have a relationship with God? Well, you know, my life is empty. And I have to have a better purpose of something to live for. That has nothing to do with salvation. Because after we see, if you find out, okay, I don't have this wonderful relationship with God. And I'm not in fellowship with God. I'm not walking with God, and my life is still empty, and my life is still miserable. Something didn't work. Well, you, you're trusting the wrong thing. You're committed to something that has nothing to do with going to heaven or hell. Number three. We're moving right along, amen. None of the above reasons are the real reasons to get saved. Now, let me tell you why you should get saved. Let's just go back in time a little bit. To the day when Yankee Arnold was only 18 years old, and a man was sitting with me in, my, in the living room. And he explained to me that if I don't trust Christ as my Savior, I'm going to hell. I told somebody one time, I'm trusting Christ as my Savior because I wanted fire insurance. I wanted fire insurance. Why? I don't want to go to hell. That's why I needed a Savior. Because I was going to hell to pay for my sins. And I don't want to pay for my sins. And I don't want to go to hell. That's why I need a Savior. So I need to understand what do I have to do to escape hell. My fellowship with God and my relationship with God, put that aside. That has nothing to do with it. I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven when I die. And after I trust Christ as my Savior, yes, I can learn the Word of God and I can walk with God and have fellowship with God. And I can have a relationship with God. All those wonderful things. But if I don't trust Christ as my Savior, there is no relationship with God. You see, you have to have the birth in order to have the relationship. I told my daughter, I said, you're my daughter because you are born in my family. And that's our relationship. So the birth determines your relationship. And it's your walk that determines your fellowship. And if you walk with the Lord in the same direction, you can have fellowship with God. according to your walk, 1 John chapter 1. But if you don't have the walk, you won't have the fellowship. And you can break the walk. God never breaks the walk. It's you did that. And if you confess in your sin, does not restore the walk. 
confessing your sins so that you can continue the walk. You have to restore the walk with God. And if you don't restore that walk, you won't have fellowship with God. So I decided I am going to, I want to have fellowship with God. I want to walk with God. And I make that decision. God never broken it off with me. But you can break it. But if you think that's what gives you salvation, then you have every reason to have questions and doubts. Well, I don't know if I'm saved because I'm not walking with God anymore. I, I don't go to church anymore, and I don't pray. I don't give money to the Lord's work anymore, and I don't do none of that stuff anymore. And I went back to drinking and chewing and going with the girls who do. That is the wrong basis for salvation. I want to know how can I be assured of not going to hell. And remember this. You can't know you're going to heaven until you know you can't go to hell. You know how I know I'm going to heaven? Because I can't go to hell. So how come you can't go to hell? Well, that's what I'm going to talk to you about. Look at the next page. Page two, top of the page. Having a relationship, fellowship, or a walk with God doesn't explain how to escape hell and go to heaven. It's pretty, but it's ineffective. That's not why I talk to people. I don't want you to have a good, wonderful walk with God. But if I don't tell you how to get saved, you're not going to have no wonderful walk with God. You're not going to have any relationship with God. Am I against having a written? No, I'm not. I want people to listen to what I do say. Don't read into it. Number four, none of the above reasons explains on how to get saved. You may have an imaginary walk, fellowship, and relationship with God without being saved. You can be saved and not have fellowship with God. Can you trust Christ as your Savior, have eternal life, and not have a wonderful fellowship with God? Yes, you can. You can trust Christ as your Savior and never walk with God. And based upon what God said and what he did, you can still go to heaven without being close to the Lord, without loving God. See, I'm not going to heaven because I love God. I'm going to heaven because he loved me. But I want the world to know that I love the Lord, so therefore I want to walk with God. Look at the next statement. When your walk, fellowship, or relationship is not what it should be, and the emptiness is still there, it will be normal to doubt your salvation. That's because these things depend upon you and not the Lord. Your relationship with God depends on you, and your fellowship depends on you, and your walk depends on you. Uh, that depends on you. So your salvation depends upon you, not what God said and did. That's why people have questions and doubts about security of their salvation. They're not assured. And I've had people come along and they say, well, we didn't have anybody trust the Lord tonight, but I gave them assurance. And that can be good. You can't give assurance to anybody until they believe in eternal security. You don't believe in eternal security, you cannot have assurance. That means you have to be secure. Forever. And it can't change. If it can change, you can't be eternally secure. And you'll never have the peace of mind about where you're going to go when you die. For sure. I can't go to hell if I tried. I haven't tried. But I know I have eternal life. I know God can't undo it. I know every person I ever lead to Christ, it can't be undone. And that is so wonderful to know. But all these years... I've been teaching and preaching. You can know you have eternal life. You can know that you're going to heaven when you die. Every time I give the gospel, I always teach that. Because see, eternal security, that's the purpose of sharing the gospel so that you can be sure of going to heaven. And that's the only way you really believe that it was by grace, Christ alone, faith alone, is because it's eternal. If it's not eternal, then how long was it good for how long was it good for? It? Well, I'm saved for how long? Did you sin again? What good is that? No, you got to go by what the book says. Look at number five. Salvation depends upon us believing who Christ is. He's the Lord. What he did, he died upon the cross to pay for my sins. What he said, he that believeth in me hath everlasting life. So you want to go to heaven when you die? Let me tell you about Jesus Christ. He's God in the flesh. You ever hear me say that? He's God in the flesh. That's who he is. Well, what did he do? He took all of my sins and paid for them on the cross and came back from the dead. Well, what am I supposed to do about that? He said, he that believeth in me hath everlasting life. The only thing he wanted me to do is believe he did it for me. That's all I had to believe. I believe he did it for me. 
And I'm accepting him as my savior. I'm trusting him to take me to heaven because he paid for my sins. There is no other way. I want you to take your Bible and turn to the book of uh, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians in chapter 1. Now see, you may already be very secure. And you know you have eternal life. But do you know how to explain it to somebody who has questions and doubts? Anytime I talk to somebody and they're not sure they're saved. Well, I was saved 10 years ago, but I'm not sure anymore. I deal with them like a lost person. I don't try to convince them that they were saved because I don't know if they were or not. I give them the gospel as though they never heard it before. And I want you to, from this point on, do you understand what I'm saying? And if you all trust Christ right now as your Savior, God gives you right now eternal life. And you can know that you're going to heaven when you die. Now look here in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And look in verse 17. Understand a few words here. Later on in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we have the resurrection chapter. But in the resurrection chapter... And verse 3, it says Christ died for our sins. Christ died for our sins. That's the cross. That's the message of the cross. What did he do on the cross? Die for my sins. So I can say Christ died on the cross for my sins, or I can say Christ died for my sins. I don't have to put the word cross in there, but it's understood. So there's no power in the cross word itself without an understanding. A lot of people died on the cross. But Jesus came back from the dead. Now, here in 1 Corinthians, in verse 17, chapter 1, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the, what's that word? The gospel. Now, get this. Not with wisdom of words, lest the, what? Cross of Christ. Can you connect the gospel and the cross together? I think so. Because you don't have any good news without the cross. And if I'm going to preach the cross, I have to preach this good news. Christ died for me. And I wonder, now why did he die for me? So I wouldn't have to pay for my sins. He did it for me. Best news I ever heard in the world. Now look in verse 18. For the preaching of the what? Cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. It's because of what Christ did on the cross that gives it power. He paid for my sins. If he didn't pay for my sins, then I don't have a payment for my sins. I have no way to escape hell. But there's power in this message. Now, take your Bible and turn all the way over there to the book of 1 Corinthians in chapter 15. Chapter 15. Chapter 15, and you'll notice this simple little verse. You'll notice there in verse 3. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that... Christ died for our sins. That's the cross. It don't have to say the word, but that praise is talking about what Christ did on the cross. So when we preach the cross, that's why there's no gospel without the cross. There's no gospel, good news, without Christ paying for my sins. What made it good news was God was going to justify the heathen through faith. And that's the promise that he made to Abraham. The just shall live by faith. So Christ had to die so that God the Father could keep his word that he promised to Abraham. That God would justify the heathen by faith alone. Faith in what Christ did for us. It's not what we do. So people who have questions and doubts about their salvation, mainly boils down to they were trusting in their works for some reason. There's only a couple things you have to know to understand that you have security in what Christ did on the cross for you. Now, take your Bible and turn to John chapter 3. The Gospel of John and chapter 3. I know you have a photographic memory, but I'd appreciate it if you look at the Bible. In John, John chapter 3, I want you to look there in verse 14. Because Jesus has told uh, Nicodemus, you must be born again. In verse 7. <clears throat> Since you can't see the kingdom of God or enter into the kingdom of God unless you're born again. So now down here, he's telling them how to be born again. And he uses an Old Testament illustration. Verse 14, as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. What do you think that refers to? The cross. Lo and behold. So even in John 3, 16, where it explains what God gave. So you see there in verse 14, excuse me, verse 15, that whosoever believeth in him. 
We're to believe in the one that God said was lifted up on the cross and he died there to pay for our sins. So he says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life or have eternal life. Now think about it. If you were to believe John 15, whosoever, okay, who would that refer to? Anybody, right? If it refers to anybody, then it means Christ had to die for everybody. Right? Now, look at that. Should not perish. That means cannot, will not go to hell. Now, if I cannot perish, if I accept Christ as my Savior, what is he guaranteeing me? I will not perish. That means I will not go to hell. Have everlasting life means I will go to heaven. Is that a promise? Is that a guarantee from God himself? That is eternal security. I am secure. I cannot go to hell. I have eternal life. And people say, well, I didn't believe the Bible. And even, I've been saved. Where are you going to die? Well, I don't know. Why don't you know? If it was the gospel you heard, and it was the gospel you trusted, then you ought to know what you were saved from and where you're going to and why. And if you don't know, are you sure you're saved? What are you dependent upon? Saved from what? Now, get this. Look in John 3, 16. Most people say this is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. I agree. It is a great verse. It, like, puts it all together and puts in a little capsule and says, here it is. What a nugget. Look at that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Gave his only begotten son. That's the cross. Well, that's when he was lifted up. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the world, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up. And Christ says in chapter 12 of the Gospel of John, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And so we preach the Gospel about the man who died on the cross. What did he do on that cross? He died and paid for my sins. Why? So that I could have as a free gift, everlasting life. Verse 16 again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, saying it again, Whosoever, anybody, believeth in him, here's the guarantee, shall not perish. So if I trust Christ as my Savior, and I said, I should expect from God, I'll never go to hell. If that verse is true, I cannot go to hell. Have everlasting life, then I got everlasting life. If that verse is true, I got everlasting life. Yes or no? So if this is true, then I've got confidence. I know where I'm going when I, I have absolute assurance I've got God's word on it. And the reason I can't lose it is because I don't hold on to it. He has me, not me, have him. I am in his hand, and he says, no man can pluck you out of my hand. I have eternal life. Now, look at the next verse here. I want you to look in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13. I want those who come to this church to understand you're not going to heaven because the preacher said so, because you joined the church, because you gave money, and you're sincere. Now, the only reason you're going to go to heaven is because you trusted Christ as your Savior, and he paid for your sins. Think about that phrase alone. He paid for your sins. How many? If he didn't include all of them, he didn't do you any favors. He doesn't have to say, and I paid for all of your sins, past, present, and future. He doesn't have to say that. Why? He paid for my sins. That includes all my sins. Whatever I did, whenever it was, he paid it. True? Yes. Whatever and whenever it was, he did it and he died for me. But when he paid for my sins, he did it 2,000 years ago. All my sins were in the future. Right? Well, if he died 2,000 years ago and paid for my sins... Well, I could trust Christ as my Savior today. All right, I'm 76 years old. Somebody tried to make me 77 a while ago, and it wasn't true. I resent that. <laughs> I can trust Christ as my Savior. As he already paid for my sins up to the 75 years I've lived. What if I wait and trust the Lord when I'm 99? Had he paid for those in that between 75 and 99? He paid for those too? Well, if he'd already paid for those, I can trust him then. I can trust him here. I can trust him here. Trust him here. It doesn't matter when I trust him. He paid for all my sins. Now, if he paid for all my sins, and I really believe that, and I believe it, he paid for my sins, then I don't have any sins to pay for. I have people say, well, when you commit suicide, you ain't going to heaven. 
Oh, really? Is it a sin? Yes, it paid. Well, I go out here and I beat up somebody. Is that a sin? Yes, it paid. Well, that's just going to cause you to go out here and do all of that, that much more. Well, why, why didn't it work? I'm not doing that. Because, see, I have something better to live for than trying to see how bad can I be. I want to see how honored that can be to the Lord. When I say I can live as I please after I get saved, yes, I decided since I can live as I please, I want to please the Lord by going to church, studying his word, and I want to please the Lord by praying and, and living a godly life. And I, Is there anything wrong with me living as I please? Well, it may please you to go the other direction, but your heavenly father still loves you. You're still going to heaven, but he's going to beat the tar out of you. Maybe take you home before your time. I hope he does. But in 1 John 5, look at verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. When are you supposed to know that you have eternal life? When you believe. These things have I written unto you that believe. So whenever you believe, you can know you have eternal life. These are written that you may know you have eternal life. Who's it written to? Those who believe. Well, I've had people say, well, you just get them saved, and we can teach them eternal security down the road. Well, wait a minute. If I can know I have eternal life, be sure of going to heaven, why can't I tell them at the beginning instead of waiting five years or ten years? Or, why they, that's why they have all these questions and doubts, because you didn't tell them the truth at the beginning. Every time I witness to somebody, I always try to give them the teaching on eternal security. And I'll show you that in just a minute, because I know you want to know. Amen. Now, look back in your notes. The word forever or everlasting secures the length of our salvation. When he says, you have eternal life, how long will I have eternal life? If he paid for all my sins and all my sins are paid, where am I going when I die? If all my sins are paid and I got eternal life, I'm going to heaven. Now, how can I change? I can't change that. Why? Because I didn't get it because I was good and I can't lose it if I get bad. Either it's a gift or it's not a gift. Either God meant what he said or he's a liar. Can't be both ways. But look what he says up there in verse 10. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us, hath given past tense to us, those who believe, what kind of life? And he that hath the Son hath, and he that hath not the Son hath not. So whether you have eternal life or not, depending on whether you have the Son. See, when you accept Christ, look down there in verse 20. This, in the last line, this is the true God and eternal life. So when you accept Christ, you have eternal life. And he said, I'll never leave you and never forsake you. How long will I have this eternal life? It's not temporary life, it's eternal life. Now, go back here to your notes. Only got a few minutes left here. Look at letter F. If a person trusts Christ as their Savior, and they do not know for sure they are going to heaven then they haven't trusted Christ as their Savior, period. If after witnessing, they cannot tell you how they know they're going to heaven, how do you know they are? How can you say you're saved if when you get through talking to them, they don't know where they're going when they die, and they don't know why? Well, they're saved. Blessed be God, how do you know they're saved? That's why I always ask them a backup question. If I see you 10 years from now, and I ask you, where are you going to die? What would you tell me? Well, I don't know. You know, it's, you didn't get it. I'm going to heaven. Well, how do you know? Christ paid for my sins. What if 100 years from now, Christ paid for my sins? Hank did that with a guy in Belgrade that that same camp I was telling you about. And his name was Willie James. He said, Willie James, if you believe it, you have what? He said, everlasting life. He said, what about 10 years from now? He said, I still got it. What about 100 years from now? He said, I still got it. He said, what about 1,000 years from now? He said, I don't think I'll live that long. <laughs> but finally, he, he got it. If you believe it, you have what kind of life? Everlasting, everlasting life. Can you know you have everlasting life? Yes. When can you know it? The moment you trust Christ as your Savior. He that believeth, heck, present that you've got it. And if God says it, that's good enough for me. Look down at the little letter that someone wrote to me. This was just recently says, hello, Pastor Arnold. My name is Veronica, and I just want to say thank you for your ministry. I found your powerful sermons on YouTube and tune in weekly to your live online broadcast at your church. 
It has been a blessing to me because I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior through one of your messages. I was a victim of the Lordship Salvation Heresy, Armenianism and Western Holiness Movement. Thank you for the clarity of the gospel. I had always heard about John 3.16 and Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. But for the first time, these beautiful verses made sense. I was going to church, serving God, was the youth president, but I wasn't saved. I thank God Almighty for taking me out of these false teachings. I cried the day I heard the true gospel because I was living the Christian life, but I was never saved. I live in Riverside, California, and have been praying to God to lead me to a church like yours. And God willing, hoping to visit one day. For now I have been viewing your live broadcast, YouTube videos, and listening to the audio archives. I rejoice greatly in your ministry and pray for you and your family and the church. I can't wait to meet you all in heaven. Isn't that a good letter? Amen. That's somebody who's been playing the game, doing what all the preachers tell them to do, but not making the gospel clear. I've never met this woman, but she heard the gospel, and because of eternal security, now she has hope and she has confidence. It does bring peace. It does bring joy. You don't have to worry about it anymore. I'm so glad I can come to church because I want to, not because I have to. I'm so glad you give because you have to. No. <laughs> because you want to. Listen, did you listen to John John when he was up here? Doesn't he sound like somebody who has a passion to reach somebody? Doesn't, when Jesse came up here a while ago, doesn't he sound like they have a passion? I mean, there's a, 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 a fire inside of their bones. They want to do something for the Lord. But you take away the eternal security and they won't be like that. That's because they know when they lead this kid to the Lord or that teenager to the Lord, they're saved forever. Now let me show you my wallet trick. Watch my hand closely. At no time will it ever leave my wrist. Now this is similar to what I do every week. This hand represents you and me. The wallet represents sin. We all have sin on us. See, I always present the problem. God loves us, but hates our sin. And for us to pay for sin is eternal separation from God because the wages of sin is death. We have a problem. We're going to be eternally separated from God in a literal fire burning hell. But God loves us, wants us to go to heaven. But to go to heaven, we have to be perfect. No sin. God will not allow any sin into his perfection. So how can I get there? So I'm not talking to lost man. Would you like to have a relationship with God? What do you mean? What do you mean? It's nebulous. Though it's a precious term to me, like being washed in the blood. I don't tell a lost man, would you like to be washed in the blood? <laughs> well, not really. <laughs> but that's a precious term to me, but I know what I mean by that. So God says he loves us. We committed the sin, and we have to pay for it. We're guilty. And we cannot save ourselves. This hand represents Jesus Christ. God in the flesh. I always tell you who he is. He came into this world. He was perfect. He had no sin. He didn't have to die. But because he loved us. And he hates our sin because our sin separates us. So what Christ did for one, he did for everybody. He took all the sin of all the world. Paid for it on the cross. Came back from the dead. And he says, the only thing he wanted us to do to go to heaven is to believe he did this for me. When I believe it, he gives me that free gift of everlasting life. He that believeth hath everlasting life. If you don't believe it, you don't get everlasting life. And you don't get everlasting life by asking for everlasting life. If you believe what he did on the cross, he did it for you. He died and paid for your sins. You believe that? He gives you everlasting life. And you can go to heaven on what Christ did for you. So that's why he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. That's a guarantee. I will not, if I believe, I will not perish. I cannot go to heaven. I am secure. That is forever, eternally secure. I cannot go to hell. But have everlasting life. I am going to heaven when I die. It is secure. Nobody can stop it. Nobody can change it. And God can't change his mind. We've got God bound by his word. He has to obey it. He promised. And he means what he says. I love being bold on his behalf. Because I know God doesn't lie. He tells the truth. 
And there is no salvation outside of what I've told you about. There's no plan B, C, or D. Only a plan A. I hope that you have survived this morning. Let's pray, shall we? With every head bowed and every eye closed, no one looking around. I'm not going to have you stand up or come forward. I don't want anything from you. I just want you to understand that salvation is free. Have you really trusted Christ as your Savior? Or do you just hope you're saved? Have you taken God at his word? Do you really believe that when Christ died, he died for you? He did. Came back from the dead and said, if you believe he paid for your sins, then by accepting him, you are accepting a payment for your sin. He was the payment. And that means you don't have any sins to pay for because he paid for them. Would you believe he loves you that much? I'm going to ask you in just a moment for a raise of hand. Raising your hand doesn't save you. It just lets me know that what I said made sense to you. And I like to know. And so I'm going to ask you, in the quietness of this moment, if what I said made sense to you, just slip your hand up and put it down. Just say, yes, I trust Christ as my Savior. I believe he died for me. If you've never done it before, and you do it right now. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you, sir. I appreciate that. Anyone else? Just very quickly, just slip it up. I'm not going to have you point it out. I'm not going to pin you against the wall. But right where you are, said, that made sense to me. I want to know for sure I'm going to heaven. So right now, I will accept Christ as my Savior. It's my only hope of going to heaven. Would you do that? Anyone else before we close? Our Father, we thank you so much for all you've done for us. We pray, Lord, for these that have indicated by an uplifted hand that they would trust your Savior. By doing so, they become your child. You give them eternal life, and they can know that they're going to heaven when they leave. And Father, for those that are watching by internet, we pray that many would understand and put their confidence, their trust in you. We thank you for this day and for all the blessings you've bestowed upon us. We ask your blessings upon the food that's been prepared. We thank you for that and everything you've done for us. Thank you for giving us a good day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.